This episode is for students who fear reading longer writings like books, who are stressed they don't seem to understand, but who wish to be able to read and discuss more complex writings. Welcome to Episode 1 of Structuring Thoughts Bibliography, where we discuss publications of significance to our studies. For quick access to the information discussed in today's video, please use the QR code on the screen or click link in the description box below. Today we will discuss How to Read a Book, The Classic Guide to Intelligent Reading by Mortimer Adler. The book was originally published in 1940 and completely revised in 1972 with the assistance of Charles Van Dorn. Adler was born in 1902, died in 2001. The author is famed for editing the 52-volume series, The Great Books of Western Literature, and chaired the editorial committee of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Adler was a longtime professor at the University of Chicago. Charles Van Dorn, born in 1926 and died in 2019, had degrees in the liberal arts from St. John's College, a master's degree in astrophysics, and a doctorate in English literature from Columbia University. He had also studied at Cambridge in England. Van Dorn rose to national prominence in the 21 quiz show scandal in the 1950s. He went on to be the editor-in-chief of the Encyclopedia Britannica and a member of the faculty at the University of Connecticut, Torrington. This book addresses the problem of reading and understanding works of literature, including fiction, philosophy, history, and general prose, by choosing and implementing systems for reading. By choosing and implementing a system for reading. Adler's plan is divided into identifying the types of knowledge available to learn in a book. He points out that knowledge can involve skills, he calls practical knowledge, information, and insights, which he calls comprehensive knowledge. A leader can only gain knowledge of information from reading. Learning skills or practical knowledge requires repeated practice. Gaining insight or comprehensive knowledge requires deep reflection across many books and sources. So, only informational knowledge can be gained from a single book. The reader's goal is to be able to think about the world from a fuller experience by effectively gaining informational knowledge from the author. The reader's journey starts with finding the unity of the text. Finding this unity is part of an answer to why did the author write this book. The reader must attempt to understand the author fairly, that is, understand the author on his own terms and not with the reader's agenda applied to the book. Part of this process is to generate an honest judgment about the author's message. The reader should be forgiving of knowledge that the reader has with the hindsight of history, but that the author did not have. For example, we now understand the physics of flight, where no author did prior to the Wright brothers in 1903. Authors opining incorrectly prior to the Wright brothers are not unworthy of study just because they didn't have the Wright brothers' later lessons. Adler describes three phases of reading that must occur. Each stage for a novice reader may be done separately and deliberately. More experienced readers can do all three simultaneously. The first stage is to study the structure of the author's writing. The story structure or the structure of the chapters. The structure is the method the author uses to achieve the book's purpose. The structural analysis begins by skimming the book very quickly, looking at the table of contents, chapter titles, if any, and commonly used words, phrases, or ideas. This skim can be done initially in a matter of minutes. As the reader begins each section, a quick structural skim of that section is also useful. The second stage is to study the author's interpretation of the unity. What is the author's point of view and motivation for writing? It is how the unity of the text is presented that would differ from other authors. 
Only in comparison to other points of view and motivation can an author be seen uniquely. The third stage is to critique the writing and to offer a judgment on whether the author succeeded. The goal is a judgment of the author against the proposed purpose in writing the book, and not some other purpose from outside the author's experience, knowledge, or purpose in writing. There is a place for a larger contextual analysis, but this is not it. Each of these stages contributes to answering some simple question. What is the book about? How is it proven? Is it true in whole or in part? What of it? In other words, what if it is true? Or what if it is false? The reader can use modification of these basic principles across many types of writings. Adler has chapters about reading practical books on how to perform skills, imaginative literature including stories, myths, and poetry, history, science and math, philosophy, in the social sciences. The ultimate goal is to be able to do what Adler calls synoptical reading. That is, the reader is able to look at passages about a particular idea or concept in many different books. The reader then can assess each different author's ideas and perspectives honestly and uniquely. This allows the reader to then bring all of these pieces of knowledge into one comprehensive whole in the reader's mind. It is the bits and pieces from many authors that lead the reader to new insights that the reader could not have had from any one author, particular era, or specific place. How did Adler do it? He relied on his personal experience teaching the great books of Western literature to college students and adults over many years. He explains the students' progression in improving their understanding of the literature read. Adler's book helps us in learning to structure our thought by presenting us with a system of reading and studying that allows us to have a template for a solid comprehension of the material. This book is highly worth your reading it if you're seeking to improve your abilities in reading, particularly non-scientific literature. The notion of a systematic method of reading can be applied to scientific reading too, but as Adler points out, his book is not intended to offer a deep form of that system. I recommend this book for any incoming high school or undergraduate student. Students should reread this book every two more maybe three years and practice using its methods for several weeks. This book scores a 5 out of 10 in difficulty. We have just discussed Mortimer Adler's How to Read a Book, revised edition from 1972. Thank you so much for watching this video from Structuring Thought video bibliography series. You can purchase a copy of this book at the link in the description below or through my bookstore at structuringthought.com books. Please like this video, click subscribe, and click the notification bell to hear more from our Structuring Thought channel. You can watch other videos in this series by clicking on the bibliography playlist on the screen or in the description below. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye.